Hello friends, welcome back to another video. So my current career is a mixture of a lot of different things, a lot of different streams of income. So this includes content creation, mostly on YouTube. I do some freelancing, consulting, and I also own a business called Lonely Octopus, which is a self-learning platform. I also have some investments, both from when I was working at Meta and then also some personal investments now. And recently I've been dabbling a little bit more into real estate. I can honestly say that I'm pretty happy with my career right now. Am I at my dream career? No, I'm still pretty far off from that. I have a plan towards how to get there and I see myself progressing little by little. There's that quote, something about like, not about the destination, about the journey. <laughs> know something like that close enough and yeah like it's kind of like that for those of you who don't know me hello my name is tina i'm 27 years old and the current career that i have right now i have no idea what it's called i personally call it youtuber and internet stuff something like that it's a combination of a bunch of different things but i did not get here by mistake i did not just wake up one day and be like whoa how did i become a youtuber for two and a half years whoa how did i quit meta and suddenly start working for myself no no, no. it was that was not a mistake. Did I make mistakes though along the way and was it a winding path to get to where I am right now? Absolutely yes. But in the grand scheme of things, I was and still am heading in that direction. And that was by design. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys my formula for how to design your perfect career. Note, I did not say the perfect career. It's your perfect career because it really is based upon what your interests are, what your ambitions are, and what kind of lifestyle that you want to live. For some of you guys, if you had my career, you would be like, holy shit, this is terrible. Why are you the way that you are? Why is there so much chaos? But for me, it really fits me perfectly. Structure for this video. First, I'm going to talk about how to determine what your perfect career is. You know, got to figure that out first. Then we're going to reverse engineer a plan to get to that perfect career. I'll also introduce a two pillar framework, diversify and dissociate. Then I want to talk about artificial intelligence, AI, specifically its relationship with your workplace, how it's changing the landscape of work right now, um, and how it is that you can leverage AI to get to where you want to be faster and in different ways. Okay, so one more thing before I get started. I just want to make a plug for my newsletter called Boops Keyboard. It's about coding, it's about learning, I always talk about books, and you can sign up over here, also link in the description. It is free. All right, let's get started. How to determine your ideal career. So first, I actually want to take a step back from that. This idea of career versus lifestyle where life is kind of weird to me because i think they're actually really intermingled with each other and i don't think you can think about what your ideal career is without thinking about what your ideal life should look like for example when i was working at goldman sachs which is my career i had to move to new york and that dramatically changes my lifestyle then when i worked at meta i had to move to san francisco another thing like some people are just able to go to work and then just like work 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 and then come home and just be like oh like you know we're done no more work and then just do life 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 i honestly don't know how people do that like for me it's very hard for my work to not affect my life especially in terms of stress i cannot just be stressed at work and then come home and like not be stressed anymore so i highly recommend you do this exercise write down what your ideal life looks like this is a step in which you should not be afraid to dream big really think about that like don't be limited by what your own capabilities are what you think your capabilities are um or like currently what your situation is not saying that it doesn't matter we will be realistic but later on in the process trust the process okay so you can like either pause the video write it down or you know you can do it later so i'm gonna use myself as an example this is what i wrote down i want to have financial freedom which to me means being able to work when i want to but can also prioritize other things during different periods of my life without having my income dry up so i also want time freedom so i have control of my time instead of having to answer to a full-time employer doing work hours that really stresses me out because i feel like i always have to be on and look out for notifications and worry about like sudden tasks just being thrown my way i want to have location freedom so that i'm able to travel and work from anywhere in the world i do prefer traveling with some degree of luxury so not backpacking over here because i do like being comfortable and sleeping well and having good food my back can't take it anymore and with financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom, I want to then be able to have intellectual freedom, which is the ability to work or learn anything I personally find the most meaningful. I want to learn several languages, including Japanese and French. I love making YouTube videos and want to be able to do this without having to worry about my views because my income is currently directly tied to my views. I also want to write a book one day. At some point, I like to have a home base in both North America and China because that's where my family and friends are. I'd also like to have a house near the beach or mountains and an apartment in the city that's both worlds this is a more recent discovery uh self-discovery 
I want to start a family in the next three to five years. To be honest, this feels hella scary, just like even thinking about it, um, but it does, you know, give me a timeline. When I have a family and potentially children, I want to be able to focus most of my time on my family, but still be able to have that income coming in and be able to adjust my hours. So I'm still able to work to some capacities. I think I would become very bored if I did not work at all. This means that now is the time that I need to prioritize building up several revenue streams that is both flexible and sustainable enough that I can prioritize family in the future. I also want to travel a lot in the next few years. Get that out of my system. Okay, so that is kind of like your overarching, what kind of life do you want to have? But we also want to get into the nitty gritty. Trust me, this is going to be a really helpful exercise. Describe what your ideal day looks like in as much detail as possible. Because as the author Annie Diller says, the way we spend our days is of course the way that we spend our lives. This is what it is for me, my ideal day. This is what I wrote. I wake up naturally at 7 a.m., go out for a walk either on a beach or in the mountains and get some morning sunlight. Come back at 8 a.m., shower, clean up a bit, then do deep work or study until 12 p.m. This will be things that give me a sense of pride and feels the most meaningful. For example, learning about new technologies, learning new languages, uh, make videos, work on Lonely Octopus, write a book. It is most likely to be individual work. Then I'll have lunch at 12 p.m. and just hang out and chill until around 2 to 3 p.m. Read a book, go outside, look at stuff, watch YouTube videos, or just like scroll on social media a bit. I'll do another one to two hours of work that doesn't have as much brain power and also take meetings. Things like administrative tasks, emails, and team meetings. At 5 p.m., I'll go to the gym three days a week, ideally, and then the rest of the day is for family and friends. That would be going to the city, going to a restaurant, cook at home together, go for a bike ride, watch TV, whatever. Quality time. I'll clean up and start getting ready for bed at 10 p.m., read, and then fall asleep at 11 p.m. Let me also know in the comments what your ideal day looks like. Don't worry, like this is something that you don't need to be sure about. It's also probably going to change, but it's a really, really good starting point. Because now we know what your ideal life looks like, and what your ideal day looks like. These kind of things are coming together and gives us some clues about what your ideal career looks like. So when I did these exercises way before and now that hasn't really changed that much for me, it seems to me that I want a career that is remote, having a lot of different freedom, being a lot of different places and traveling, be my own boss completely because I'm a control freak uh, and I really want to have like that morning time specifically for deep work. I have lots of projects to work on simultaneously, run a business, do YouTube, write a book, learn different things, have at least some multiple streams of income because I do value stability and maintaining a certain lifestyle standard for now and also for the future, and a decent amount of passive income because there will be a time in which I want to be prioritizing my family but still having income come in. It's also important to figure out what it is from what you wrote that you do not want to have. For example, for me, I do not want to be interacting with a lot of different people. I don't want to focus on cutting costs of my life. Although I'm not opposed to still actively working to make money because I still want to be working um, even as time goes on. Like I don't want to completely not work. And I was also rate myself as like not actually super adventurous. I would say like medium adventurous. I want to travel, but I still also do want to have that home base in North America and in China. Okay, so those are like the general things. Now we're gonna take this and combine them with the skills that I currently have or you know may develop in the future. So the question is, how do I use the skills that I have where I'm not opposed to developing or I'm interested in developing to fulfill all of the characteristics that we have of Above and not fulfill the characteristics that we do not want to have. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys the results of the plan that I came up with, which I'm currently implementing, and there's some things I've already done. So first off is the remote, right? That was very important to me, and for me, that one's actually really easy because all the skills that I have uh, can be completely remote, which is coding, data science, as well as video creation, content creation stuff. The next one is wanting to be my own boss. So I implemented this back in March last year when I quit my job at Meta uh, in order to do my own things. I first started working on projects that are outside my work and getting a diverse income stream that was coming in because I'm not really the kind of person um, who would just quit my job without having like another revenue stream because I crave stability. I like having like a certain level of luxury and also as an international student, I. I'm still international. So if I did that, I would get kicked out of the US. That's why um, I started implementing the third characteristic first, which is having multiple streams of income. Me personally, I started off with two different things. The first one is obviously this YouTube channel. Um, that's really what kickstarted everything. I started making content and then building up that YouTube channel for one and a half years before I quit my job. And along the way, I started building passive income from affiliate income as well as courses. As time went on, I became more confident in content creation. I also started Lonely Octopus, which is a self-learning platform that I'm building up right now as another project I'm working on and another source of income. I also specifically designed my career so I'm not doing things that I specifically don't want to do. Like I do not want to interact with lots of people. I run content creation as a pretty solitary thing. You know, I interact with my editor. That's pretty much it. Hello there. Um, and I have 
the clients that I have for consulting. It's also just a couple clients, you know, checking once in a while. So that's cool. And for my own company, Lonely Octopus, which is a self-learning program for people interested in learning data science, coding, and artificial intelligence, and then also like diversifying their careers through freelancing. You check on the description if you're interested. I have a lot of control over that. Those are mostly team meetings and the cohort of Octopi. It's a pretty small cohort of people and I absolutely love interacting with them. Okay, so this is pretty much how I determine what I want my ideal career to look like. But I also wanted to just to give you guys four different like parameters uh, that you can consider ranking yourself on. So first one is stability. How much do you value stability? With one being like, you know, I'm okay not having job or having odd jobs around, um, not knowing like when my income is coming in. To five to being, I really want a stable career. I want to make sure that I have income coming in. The second scale is independence. How independent do you want to be? One being I'm totally fine doing what other people tell me to do with five being I want to make all of my own choices I want to be my own boss third is linked to willingness to work obviously you're gonna to have to work to get to a certain point but for your dream life how how much work do you actually want to do how willing are you to put in work that generates income with one being pretty much I don't want to work at all and with five being I love working I want to be working all the time and fourth one is luxury how luxurious do you want your lifestyle to be uh, this will be based upon how much money that you need to be making one being I am okay just chilling out and with five being i need a private jet for me stability wise i'm probably out of four i need to see income come in where else i get really anxious independence i'm at a five over here willingness to work i would say i'm at a three i would get really bored if i didn't work um but i also don't want to be working all the time luxurious i would say i'm probably at a four i do like having a nice lifestyle okay so hopefully you have a good idea now about what your dream life and your dream career looks like so i want to talk about the two pillars to think about in designing your plan to get to where you are so the first pillar is diversification diversification of income to be specific this is mostly related to the stability so how stable do you want your life to be some things to consider here so the most unstable is obviously like if you don't have a job like you're just doing things here and there uh, that's the least stable moving on from there will be a single income stream so if you're working a nine-to-five job so you're relying on one income stream and then if you value stability even more you might do some investments for one case some personal investments then moving up that scale you'll probably start thinking about freelancing like what is it that you can do to generate other income streams based on the skills that you currently have and five would be pretty much you quit that nine-to-five and you have a lot of diversified income coming from a lot of different places so you might be running a business might be running multiple businesses multiple investments things like that oh i forgot to mention diversification of income also has to do with independence because the more diversified your income streams are the more independence that you have because you can't just quit your job if you feel like it, you don't like it anymore the second pillar is dissociation what i mean is dissociation from money and time this is mostly related to willingness to work and luxury if you're working a nine to five where even if you're freelancing you're trading your time for money so you do have to actively work on something to generate income that's coming in so it's directly tied to your time so so depending on how willing it is that you are to work, you can think about how many uh, passive income streams or like semi-passive income streams that you want to build. So the lowest tier, the most beginner friendly way of creating passive income is by investing either into the stock market or into other things. You can also think about content creation where if you're a technical person, you can think about how do I build software as a service products that I can sell and just sell multiple copies of something i'm not going to go into too much more detail about this because there's so much information i highly recommend that you check out one of my favorite books called millionaire fast lane where it goes into a lot of details about how to dissociate time and money by building a specific type of business i'll also be covering more about this in depth in my career design training which is going to be on may 13th at 10 a.m pst until 12 p.m pst i would recommend if you check out that training if you're interested in career design you want to experiment and dabble a little bit don't worry you don't have to sign up for lonely octopus this really is a free career training lonely octopus is more the advanced version I would say so it's for people who are committed to designing that dream career and also for people who are specifically interested in learning data science artificial intelligence and then thinking about doing things like freelancing so yeah link in the description okay now finally AI artificial intelligence so Artificial intelligence, unless you have been living under a rock, uh, I'm sure you've heard about ChatGPT and all the AI products that are coming out now. So among many things that it's disrupting, it is dramatically shifting the landscape of the workplace. Sooner or later, I think it's going to be affecting your career. And it's also something that you can take advantage of and leverage. At the very fundamental level, it's allowing people to be far more productive. And because of this, it's allowing people to do side gigs far more easily. And there's a lot of opportunity here. For example, I can make a SaaS product very, very quickly 
quickly now. For content creation, I can use AI tools in order to generate content for me very easily too. And on top of this, another opportunity that's like kind of a bit meta um, is that it opens up opportunities for you to help companies integrate AI into what they're doing in their workflow. As companies are laying off people, they're generally hiring more contractors and freelancers to replace the people because you know the, the, the company still has to continue on. Because people are able to be so much more productive I am hypothesizing here, kind of have been seeing this happening around me. I don't know at what scale. Employers are able to lay off more people and just simply be more productive by using artificial intelligence. So I'm saying this not in the sense of like fear mongling, right? Uh, I'm just, I just wanna point this out into something to consider. This is something that people who do have full-time jobs should think about. Think about diversifying their income a little bit more um, because AI is able to do so many of the things that current employees are able to do. So as like a level of safeguarding, if you're again like scoring really highly on wanting to be stable on the stability factor, that is definitely something to consider. So in my opinion, there's a lot of opportunities that artificial intelligence is offering now. If you're interested in diversifying income and dissociating your time with your money, AI is a tool that absolutely is able to help you do that now. I'm honestly pretty jealous of people who are learning to code now and they're able to do that with AI and for content generation as well. Like I integrate ChatGPT and other AI products into my own workflow right now. I'm like, damn, like I wish I had this when I was starting out. Like. Two and a half years ago. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know in the comments how you feel about your career now. And also, do you guys want to see more content about AI, like how I incorporate AI into my workflow, into my business, or things like that? Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that as well. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.